When thinking about how to begin this unit, I first thought about the foundational skills the students would need in order to interact in a collaborative group and engage with science concepts. These are two of the resources that I find handy when doing that. Smarter Charts and Kagan Cooperative Learning. Both are very teacher friendly and help you to think about how you're managing and engaging the students before you jump into the content. Kagan Cooperative Learning supplies some great information about forming teams or collaborative tables. Team formation cards guide you in using your data to rank students in the high, high medium, low medium, and low categories using the data that's generated from your school assessments. By color coding the students, it allows you to create heterogeneous class tables that give you a nice sampling of the various levels and talents in your classroom. Once you have those collaborative tables built, I move on to the team building, another resource from Kagan. They supply us with some great, quick, but meaningful activities to build a team atmosphere amongst each of the tables you have now created, which are guided by your data points. Again, finding a useful way to insert data into a data-driven classroom. For the first few days, we focus purely on team building. We develop anchor charts that tell us what a team would look like, sound like, and feel like. We use various team building activities and introduce structures for how students will respond to me as well as to each other. As the students are working, I'm doing my best to stay out of the way because I'm observing. Just like a scientist would observe, I'm observing the students in their new collaborative teams. We're looking for those social skills which we established would be best practice for working with a team member. I should see them showing me that, yes, they know what it looks like, sounds like, and feels like to be a good team member, as we have established on our various protocols, guided by Kagan and Smarter Charts. So something to think about is, how have you structured your classroom so that you know all students will be engaged, all students will interact, and everyone will be challenged to move past the level they're at because they've been interested in this great new topic that you've introduced all across your curriculum. Once we had participated in some team building activities through the Kagan resources and Smarter Charts, I then moved on to the planning stage of how to actually engage students in exploring the, the concept of how do we communicate with the world around us using our senses, specifically the sense of hearing and the sense of sight as seen through our ears and through our eyes and how that translates into communicating to our brain what we see and what we hear and smell and, and how everything is connected. So I first turned to this resource, not so much for the next gen standards themselves, but for this great concept structure that they give us and how to really structure our time with students uh, exploring new content. So they tell us to first engage, then allow for exploration, and then explain the actual content behind it once they've had a chance to explore for themselves, elaborate, and then have the students evaluate their understanding of that concept you've been working on. When thinking about launching this cross-curricular unit, I also used Stephanie Harvey's Primary Comprehension Toolkit, specifically the book on asking questions, and helping us to think around how are we going to get students to question something that they think they may already know a lot about. Another resource that I used, Questions, Claims, and Evidence. I really like this resource because it helped me dig deeper into how should a student develop a claim, an initial understanding of the concept, turn that claim into a question, and then from that question, test and explore to provide evidence that supports the truth of what they're learning. When we think about launching a cross curricular unit, everything you read, and of course what you know is best practice, you must immerse the students in the concept that we're trying to present. So when you think about the literature that you would immerse the students in, you're thinking about many things. You're thinking about narrative, informative, concrete and abstract ideas, so that all across your day you're thinking about how can I integrate this big idea of communication, transfer it down to communicating with our senses, how authors communicate, through their words, and illustrators communicate through their pictures, informative text that communicates with text features, even communities. 
They communicate through maps and programs for their citizens. I also wanted to make sure that we had a place to really keep track of and document our learning. So I utilized the resources at CMAP and created some posters that we would be able to post all throughout the room in order to document what are we really thinking, what are those connections we're making. So all across our day, coming back to the big idea of communication. How do we share messages both with our body, mind, and talents across our day? I also created a poster that would help us get our initial th thoughts down as far as our current understanding of the topic. So our essential question in science, connected to the big idea of communication, how do our five senses work to communicate with the world around us? So one of the first few days we'll work with, you know, what do students think they know about sound? And all throughout ongoing, what new understandings about sound are they developing because of our explorations and elaborations? And what are they wondering? Lingering questions as well as questions that are answered as they evaluate their claims and evidence.